skies, barbecue, and bridles. You'll find them all in Stephenville, Texas at the Bayer Legends Celebration of Champions next. Welcome to Stephenville, Texas, the National Rain Cow Horse Association World Finals for Open Bridle. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Metters, with me Russell Dilday, and Russell, let's start with a working definition for Open Bridle. The Open Bridle is where we're headed with these horses from when we begin. This is after the snaffle, the hackmore, and the two rain. This is where we're trying to get with these horses. This is where communication and control just kind of all blend together, and these horses are listening to the smallest movement we make. Looking at this field, it's a strong field. You have some NRCHA household names in there, Robert Chown, Don Murphy, and Ted Robinson. Yeah, and then we got some newcomers, you know, Ken England, Brenda Brown, Chad Parkinson, wanting to make a, make a little money, get a piece of the action. Then you got all the middle of the road guys in there too, you know, like Wade Rainey and them, trying to come and keep it going. One other note, the open bridle competition, just two events, a rain pattern in the fence work, and first out is Short Oak, shown by Robert Chown. Linda Wacker is the owner. She lives in Valley View, Texas. And we'll kind of dig in uh, first, Russell, in this raining pattern. Uh, starts with some big circles. Let's talk about, let's kind of break the raining pattern down and what the judges are looking for and what the horse is supposed to be doing. Well, you know, every raining uh, pattern consists of a large fast and a small slow at, at least. Sometimes they have two large fasts and they change, that changes up a lot as to what the pattern itself is. Robert's running a big fast, small slow, big fast, and then a lead change. And uh, what they're looking for in the lead change is a nice smooth lead change. You don't want your horse's um, tail flipping up, his head popping up. You just want it to look like he just effortlessly went the other direction without any um, bobbles in, the, in his face or body. And uh, this is, uh, Robert's doing a pretty good job of it. His transitions, which uh, speed control, you want to go from the big fast to the small slow, smooth and effortlessly. And um, the first one was kind of okay. You could see that horse pull line a little bit there in the middle. We're going to see how um, see how this lead change looks. You want him to come straight through there, and just that horse was looking off a little bit, and that lead change was a tiny bit rough, but absolutely not enough to deduct for. Get into some spins and some big stops, and oddly enough, if you'll watch a raining pattern, when we get into the fence work, you're going to see a lot of those same elements in the fence work. It's just uh, <laughs> in a different phase of competition. Yeah, that's right. You know, uh, what, we're what we're looking for here is the way that horse guides to that rider's cues. And the smaller the cue is, the easier the horse guides, the prettier it all looks. That was a pretty good stop right there. Uh, he ran really straight. Everything looks really clean, and his turnaround was nice. Here's another good run. Looked like he, he started to slow down just a little bit there at the end, but definitely not a scotch or anything you could hurt. And this is a big old plus spin. Love that spin. He's setting up for another departure. Uh, the departures, you don't want that horse to trot before he takes the lope. Another pretty stop. This is a nice little run. Horse is given to the bridle and backing up freely. Very smooth, and you talked about the lead change, and here's a chance to see it in slow motion. Yeah, and here this horse is leading with his uh, right front and switches to leading with his left front. That's a lead change. The foot that's leading is the leading foot in the change. Short Oak and Robert Chown in there with a 214, and that gets us to CD Less. Shad Parkinson is the rider. Jana Jones is the owner, and Shad, one of those first-time finalists here, so he'll battle a little bit of nerves, but on a very nice-looking horse. You know, Shad's been showing for a long time, though. This kid really knows what he's doing. Uh, I've showed against him a hundred times. He is so clean in the raining, really strong, and uh, he's been in the show pen enough times that he shouldn't have too bad a set of jitters. Older horses, and you know, it's one of those situations where you know your horse very well, and so it's, it's not hard to measure off the degree of difficulty that you want to pursue in a raining run. That's right, and looks like he's just keeping it nice and smooth and slow. He's not going to lose any points in these circles. He's not risking a lot trying to mark up, but a lot of times these circles are, it's a risk that is not worth taking because it is so hard to mark up in the circles and so easy to mark down. This pair won the Open Bridle Spectacular in the National Rain Cow Horse Association Derby, so got to put them at the top of the contender list for this final. Oh, definitely. Yep. Definitely, he's in, and he's sitting in good shape, showing smart, and it's all going to come down to the stops and the spins again. <laughs> Said that enough times, but 
uh, this, uh, this shad can make those two things happen. So, Another baking, I mean, so you can say, you know, when you go through the spins and the lead changes, is you, you just want to kind of set the table. Don't make any mistakes and then pick up your points when you get into the stops and spins. Right, unless you just have a horse that can't stop and spin and he circles really good. You better try to get your points there. That was a nice stop. That horse is looking to spin. Pretty. That horse is swinging his hind end around just a little bit, but he's got enough speed to cover it up. So I, I'm going to have to say I like the spin. This horse is packing. Oh, man, that's a big scotch right there, and that's going to hurt him at least a point to judge, unless they take away more in the run content. I don't know, but um, you can see that horse is running down there with his tail up. That's That really doesn't mean anything. It takes away from the picture a little bit. It's no big deal at all, and that's a beautiful stop right there. And his spin was excellent on the other end, too. One of the worries with these older horses is they will anticipate you a little bit, and that's probably what happened in this sliding stop. Yep, right here. This is just a just a scotch. That's a pointer. It's a shame this could have been a much higher run. He's probably still going to mark pretty good. Not too bad. 215 for Shad Parkinson and C.D. Less. They have taken the lead, but it's early in the competition. More from Stephenville after this break. Welcome back to Horse TV's coverage of the NRCHA World Finals, the Open Bridal Competition, and that is Wade Rainey on Lena's Gray. Catherine Blickenstaff is the owner. She bred this horse, so she'll be sitting on the edge of her seat as he takes a run at taking the lead in the reigning part of the competition. And this is a great horse right here. I've watched Rain Wade show this horse since since he's had him. I've had show against him in, uh, you know, in the beginning, he was a little rough around the edges, had a spot here and there, but now this horse has become nothing but solid. This is a fun horse to watch and a terrible horse to have to show against. Seven-year-old Gray Stallion, uh, a son of Lita's right on, so you expect him to have some pretty good reigning genes. Oh, yeah, and, uh, and he does a great job in spite of having Wade Rainey up there. <laughs> 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 no, really, the, Wade has done a great job with this horse. Um, he's so solid in this reining. Everything looks so smooth. His reins are loose in those circles. He's staying right on his circle. When he comes back to his small slow, it is just, it's just pretty. He's pretty to watch. And tough in the cow work, too, when it gets there. Definite contender for this event or any other. This horse is just a great mover. You know, he captures your eye, captures your attention, and... He's just a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, it looks so soft in the face there. You know, he's just barely guiding him around. You don't see him, you don't see him jerking his head up or anything abnormal. And now we'll see if he can stop and spin like I think he can. If he doesn't, we're going to blame Wade. Pure rundown, big stop. Really big stop. Maybe hard to see from the front on, but from the side where the judges are, that was a good one. Pretty nice turnaround. Just a tad bit hoppy, but not bad. And another nice straight run down. Pretty, very pretty. That horse just drops his hip in the ground and does nothing but make you want to plus him. It's like cha-ching, you can almost hear the, the points being added onto his yep, score right that's there. right. <laughs> that nice spins. That is right. And Wade's hearing him in his head. He's just thinking, i got to run down there and get one more stop and a back up. Pretty. Now, pretty is a great way to describe it. Lena's gray, Wade Rainey. Not one hitch in this entire run, and they score really well. Look at the spins one more time here. Yep. There's, uh, there's no hole in this run. There's no place to take away. That's pretty. See, he just barely picks some bridle reins up. He's not pulling him, hauling him. His mouth isn't open. Everything's nice. And that changes things at the top of the leaderboard. 220. Now to miss and no checks, Brenda Brown in her open bridle final. Warledge LLC out of Costa Mesa, California is the owner here. And 220 definitely has raised the bar a little bit here in Stephenville. You know, Brenda Brown has a shot at catching it because she has, comes from a reigning background. Her father was uh, Phil Hansen, who was in the cutting, but uh, Brenda has done a lot of reigning, and this is a really nice horse right here. I've, I've ridden this horse a time or two. He is fun to be around. He's a good-minded horse, and Brenda knows how to get the reigning done. 
That was a little rough right there. He looked like he was going to maybe go the other way, and she had to rein him back over, open his mouth a touch, but not enough to just kill her over. Circles are pretty nice. He packs. She's, she always has a lot of uh, head position on her horses. The circles should look nice and clean with Brenda. Well, Russell, in this competition, you know, it's, it's two phases of competition. A lot of rain cow horse are three. Herd work, then the rain work, and the fence work. Uh, in a situation like this, not a, lot of, not a lot of opportunity to make points up. Do you pay attention to what the other scores are? You know, when you hear 220, does that kind of change how you, how you approach your competition? Well, a lot of that just depends on who you are. If you're somebody that's strong in the raining, that'll make you step it up a little bit because you want to keep up. If you're not strong in the raining, you don't want to go try and mark more than you can do because you'll wind up having a mistake and take yourself right out of it. You want to stay solid in the rain and go try to mark up in that fence work if that's where you're strong. But you can bet that um, the people that can be stronger in the raining are going to step it up a notch. Brenda's looking pretty smooth. Rundowns are nice. And a nice stop. That horse kind of turned off a little bit at the end of the stop there, but not a big deal at all. It was a very pretty stop. Good turnaround. This is looking like a nice run. Just trying to gently increase the speed on him there. Second yep. stop right here for Brenda. You want to build to that speed. You don't want that horse just running off at the end of the at the end of the rundown because that's all that's all credited or minus as far as the content of the rundown itself on how that horse runs. A pretty okay spin. Maybe this horse doesn't quite have, isn't having the eye appeal today that the gray horse had, but still, this is a nice run. Pretty. Pretty run. Back up for her, and, you know, Wade Rainey and Lena's gray was a tough act to follow. Missing no checks, and Brenda Brown, solid, though, right where you want to be, 214, uh, by no means out of the competition. Nope. Master Kawia next to go, and here's a guy that, He's kind of the master of the rain cow horse world, Ted Robinson. Six times he's been the NRCHA Snafflebit Futurity Champion. And he's one of those guys that when you compete against him, you circle it because every time Ted shows up, he kind of comes in there wanting to win. Yep, that's for sure. You know, there's been some discussion on someone this age still competing, and maybe it's dangerous, but uh, that's quelled down <laughs> now that he won the <laughs> world championship this year. <laughs> Here he is trying to do it again. Uh, this guy is like... This, this guy is the energizer bunny. You cannot stop him. You can't get him down. He keeps showing to the end. It may look like he's not going to even uh, be in the top, you know, seven. And he'll come with a fence work or something and just take the whole show over. And a great showman. Not to mention a great guy to be around. He's having a nice run. This is a horse that um, John Warden and Ted partnered on. Uh, John owned the horse and had Teddy ride it, so Teddy gets half of the winnings and half of the horse and so on and such forth. Kind of just a friendly partnership deal, but it's a big old pretty horse, and when it comes to the fence, this horse can run and has the power. And he's pretty in the rain and too, so Teddy's got a great chance, as always. Seven-year-old stallion by Master Remedy, and you know the master's on board, and. <laughs> I think one of the highlights of going to the NRCHA Futurity is just to see Ted Robinson and the horses he brings, and you know you can't help but root for him. He's just uh, he just kind of captures your imagination. Yeah, he does, and a great sportsman. Boy, old Johnny is running. The stop, you know, this horse can have a huge stop right there. He just didn't get in the ground like like he can. Really good spin around, though. Nice. Probably the most aggressive in terms of speed that we have seen so far. Yeah, that horse is, uh, he's not afraid to run a little. And uh, he might be pulling on the bridle a little bit with Teddy there, but uh, Teddy can cover it up so well just by going ahead and letting him run. And then uh, when you got him running good, you can get them good big stops, which he'll probably get right here in the middle. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Pretty. Now, they might hurt him a little bit in that spin because that horse looked to the outside of the spin a little bit. Um, and we'll just see what they'll do with their content on him raising up a little bit in them rundowns. Other than that, really a neat run. Master Kui and Ted Robinson, 213 and a half, but the leader, Wade Rainey and Lena's Gray, 220. More of the rain work still to come here in Stephenville, Texas.
Back in Stephenville, Texas, the National Ranked Cow Horse Association World Finals, the open bridle competition. And that is Don Murphy on Sparking Train. Tony Costa is the owner. And Don Murphy is one of those guys that's been around for a while, seasoned competitor, and uh, you expect him to do well if not win. Oh, that's for sure. This Don Murphy can do everything. You know, he, he can get a horse to spin so fast, I, I don't even know how he does it. Um, he just became uh, an inductee in the NRCHA Hall of Fame this year, and th there you'll see why when he gets done with these runs, I'm sure. Excellent hand with a horse, well-rounded, can rope, can, you know, can do every bit, every facet of the NRCHA event. Pretty, pretty work. You know, when you, when you talk about lead changes, you want it to be effortless, like you almost don't even notice it, and that's what you saw right there. Yep, that's right. That horse maybe doesn't have the Rainer style nose on his chest kind of head pack, but it's it's running free and loose on the bridle reins. So there's this is all um, this is all really good stuff that we've got going on here. He is uh, in control of everything, and he's got enough speed, you know, to, that it's eye appealing. It doesn't have to be tucked down, you know, more like the style that Brenda Brown had earlier. It's, they're just two different styles, another nice lead change. Don's really doing good, and he can, I will be surprised if he does not whirl this horse around in the spins. American Quarter Horse is running the family. His son, CJ, a very talented roper. Daughter, Nellie, very good on the cow horse as well. That first big stop right here for Don Murphy. That was a big one, <laughs> very good. Yeah, those spins that you were talking about. Nice. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that horse moving around a little bit on the end. She's got a little heat, but Don can handle it. There we go. Beautiful stop. That's a big one. That was a big one. Now his horse stood good on the end. And another nice spin. Pretty. Don's having him a run here. Uh, I had a kid working for me this year, and very nice some things changed at the ranch look like it might sell or something so he wanted to go somewhere and get another job i told him snaffle bits of time to do it i asked who he wanted to go to and this is who he picked don murphy and that's where the kid is now 218 for sparking train and don murphy they don't take the lead but they are just two points out of it out of done it big jay holmes is the rider triple j ranch out of sarasota florida is the owner we have a 220 on top, 218, and we'll see if Jay Holmes can at least try to get in that area code. I mean, we're talking about challenging them circles. That's what Jay Holmes was doing right there. That was pretty neat. Got his horse running. He's uh, good head position. Everything looks nice. Horse is being soft, and then he went back to the small slow. See if he goes on and keeps challenging it. Now the second circle's not quite, eh, he's picking up the speed there at the end. That looks nice, really nice. He's trying to plus. He's trying to get up there with them other guys. This horse is not unfamiliar with this arena. This horse won the Open Hackmore the first year we had this show in Stevensville. This is a really nice horse. Also bred for reigning. This is an eight-year-old stallion by Hollywood Dunnett. Well, he's versatile, too. 400 AQHA points, tie-down roping, heading, healing, reigning, and working cow horse. So uh, multifaceted. Yeah, I don't care what you say about them Florida guys. <laughs> this Jay Holmes can still do everything. Very nice. This horse is as pretty as you need. This is the prettiest circles we've seen yet. Got his lead change there. Everything's set up for him to go run and stop and mark big. Just Mouth showed in the world's greatest horseman competition. Going to retire this horse, so... Kind of like to see him go out with a bang. Yep, and you know that's what he's thinking. Oh, man, that hurt so bad right there. Got the scotch just like we had with Shad Parkinson, and that's going to hurt this run. Spins are just, spins are okay, but where they're going to get him is in that scotch. They might get him for a point for the scotch, and they might get him for some run content on the uh, rundown itself. And then the spins were just, were pretty good, you know, nothing special. This is a great stop. He's trying to get some points back. Lost his shoes, see it laying right there behind him? That slid plumb out of his shoes. <laughs> Pretty good turnaround. He's got one more stop to get. Pretty, another pretty stop. I'd like to see them stops again, those last two. Boy, a big, strong horse and 
trying to get the most out of them here, and we will let you see one of those stops again. Now, you can't, that's an excellent stop. Excellent. And the score, 211 and a half for Dunn at Big, and Jay Holmes are gonna have to regroup in the fence work part of the competition. And now to Sam Rose, Wiggy's last is the horse. Grantham Farms Incorporated is the owner. Here's Sam Rose again, one of my favorite guys. There's, uh, you never have to wonder what Sam's thinking because he'll sure enough tell you. <laughs> I love having this mic and him not being able to hear me till, of course, later. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear about everything I say. But uh, he's just got to have a nice, smooth run. He can do everything. He's a roper, a cutter, cow horse guy. Dude, he's great and the world's greatest. He is really a good guy. A little cranky at times, but yeah, it goes with his age. You know, he learned how to ride like that in the cavalry from the first Civil War. <laughs> it's really paying off. He's not afraid of speed, a little disaster. Pretty you, work. You are going to hear from him. So. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's not bad when they're having a really good run. <laughs> so far, he's doing good. You, know, you talk about versatility in the horses, and, and you made a point on Sam. You know, he heads, he heels. Uh, he's pretty active in the NCHA, and also the NRCHA, and he's, you know, it, that, that speaks a lot for, for his ability as a horseman. Yeah, you know, and not only, he goes the extra mile, he's on the board, he's on the committees, trying to help the NRCHA grow and become good, he's on the judges committee. Uh, he just does a world of things. And right now he's having a really good run. As long as we stay this way, I'm not gonna be in any trouble. Pretty. And uh, Sam can run down the fence too. And this is a nice, big, pretty clean moving bay horse. That, that's a pretty picture he's painting for us. And a nice run down. Oh, the, you know, it was a pretty good stop. That horse just kind of got up in his face a little bit. Not a big plussing stop, but sure nothing wrong with it. And that's a nice, clean turnaround. Maybe stopped a little short of center there. Uh, and that trot right there is probably what hurt us the most. He just started to trot it off and they're gonna get him for at least a one pointer. Another decent stop, horse that got a little bit bad in the head, but not nothing you could just kill him for. And a very pretty turnaround, stopped right on the center. That was close to a trot, not bad. There's a good stop. You know, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing Sam be right there in the average. Had some really good stuff and then some stuff that hurt him a little. And their score 211. So here's how it looks with one rider left. Lena's Gray and Wade Rainey on top of that 220. But Don Murphy closing the gap a little bit at 218. And all that's left is first timer Ken England to reign. And then we are headed down the fence. More action from Stephenville, Texas when we come back. Glad you're with us in Stephenville, Texas, the National Rain Cow Horse Association World Finals, the Open Bridal Competition, our last rainer, Ken England on Start Me a Tab, owned by Tom Warner out of Sarasota, Florida. And 220 is the bar. We'll see if he can eclipse that or at least get in the same neighborhood. Yeah, and he's trying to. He's trying to right here, Jeff. He's just had a beautiful big fast of draping them reins. He's not even touching that horse. And he came back to a small slow, just as pretty as can be. This is a good horse. And this is a good young rider. You know he's coming out here trying to get a piece of the action. Ten-year-old stallion by Tangy's Classy Peppy. And we have seen some, some really good reining runs so far. And, yeah, you're exactly right. Ken England just right up there with him. Yeah, he's putting... He's putting a pretty good run together. I, uh, we'll have to see how this horse can run and stop, but if it's anything like these circles, he's in really good shape. This, uh, this kid will be tough, be tough all the way through it. You know, when you're starting out, there's nothing like making the finals. First trip to the show and he's made the finals. So everything from here on out is just, uh, is just gravy, on the, gravy on the biscuits for him. It's all frosting. So he's really got nothing to lose. This is some of the best showing to do is there's less pressure in the finals than there ever is in the prelims, it seems like to me, especially when it's your first time. The worst you can do is better than you hoped. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's nervous, it hasn't shown so far because he hasn't had a bobble in this raining run so far. First sliding stop right there. Very pretty. You know, he didn't even hardly pick up on the reins. You wonder how he even told that horse to stop. And that is a very nice uh, spin around. 
pretty. Didn't nice and pull flat, one. good speed. Yep, everything's looking good. He's just, uh, this is what we were talking about when we were talking about communication with those bridle reins. Another beautiful stop. You, uh, you're exactly right. You have to look really hard just to see how he is communicating with mm -hmm. that horse. Yeah, the reins are barely even coming tight. There's not, you, I haven't been able to punch a hole in this reining run yet. And this last stop sure didn't give me anything to complain about. Backs up smooth. They're going to have to mark this guy up there. This, he's done a great job here with this horse. Start me a tab in Ken England. I mean, you know, the communication between the horse and rider absolutely flawless and that's going to reflect in the score because as you mentioned i mean he did a lot of things very very well yeah he's been getting some help <laughs> very nice work well he put on a clinic start me a tab in ken england tying with lena's gray and wade rainey 220 for the best scores in the rain work sparking train and don murphy in third short oak and robert chown and brenda brown also tied there with a 214 Bottom of the list, but still has a chance. Wiggy's last and Sam Rose at 211. Well, Russell, the fence works the definitive test for a rain cow horse. What are the judges looking for? What makes a good run? They're looking for eye appeal and control. They need to have speed to mark you up for the degree of difficulty, but in the grand scope of things, they want to see a fast run that looks clean. Well, with that in mind, let's get back to the action. First to work, Sam Rose, Wiggy's last. We know what the judges are looking for. What kind of cow is, is Sam hoping for here as they let one out at the end gate? Well, you know, Sam's nine points off the leader. These cattle are tough, and he's got a tough one right here. This is a tough cow. He's going to go ahead and go with it and try to mark big. If he can, ah, that didn't work out for him. Um, if that would have worked, he sure could have marked up, but this is just a tough running cow, and Sam's going to just regroup down here and start over. He knows he had to be big to get moved up in the final standings, and it's not going to happen with that first run down, so he's just going to clean everything up and finish his cowboy up and finish his run. He needed, um, he needed to be good, and he needed somebody else to have this cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you hope to kind of take a little wind out of a cow like this at the end of the arena, but yeah. I mean, he just, you know, this cow just turned on the jets and down the fence he went, and yeah. Sam has been kind of reeling since he nodded his head for the cow. Yeah, these are nice turns, but uh, with all the stuff we had in the beginning, he's going to have a hard time marking up. That's the kind of cow you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. No, not unless he is first and you're last. <laughs> <laughs> Sam trying to make the best of it, though, and he winds up with a 194 score, so his two event total after that 211 in the rain work, 405, and that kind of leaves Sam Rose on the fence. Yeah. Now to Shorty Oak, Robert Chown is the rider. Linda Wacker is the owner. Had a 214 in the rain work, so you know, they're also hoping for a big score to hopefully move up the standings just a little bit. Yeah, he's wanting to, he's wanting to have a, a pretty tough cow, but he doesn't want to have the one Sam had. And uh, you know what? This cow's got some air. He's, he's running around with him. This could be a good cow. He's got a little respect, too. That other one was kind of kind of ran Sam over. <laughs> pretty short oaks handling it robert he's got a handle on this cow he feels like he's got some control he's going to move him around here on the end a little bit and try to take the air out of him but these cattle here have got a lot of air it's not like you can knock the air plumb out of them in the boxing he's got a dead lay at this cow pretty had to go see how far he had to go by that cow to get him to turn that's why he wound up having to make the loop nothing against him at all the cattle have been tough here all week Really good turn. Robert needs to get circled up, and he's going to mark a high score and push himself up the standings a little bit. Excellent. Excellent circles. Heading for that neck. Riding. Pretty work. They have to mark that. They have to mark that. And they do 219, so he has a two event total of 433. He has the lead at the moment. But we're just getting to the heart of the competition. More from Stephenville when we come back. Brenda Brown ready to call for her cow on missing no checks. They had a 214 in the rain work. They'll hope to improve on that a little bit here. And Brenda, one of the three first time finalists that we're seeing in this open bridal competition here in Stephenville. Yeah, and Brenda's got a 214, which means she was, um, she was tied with uh, 
Robert Chown who came in and marked a 19 and he put some pressure on those 220s and she could do the same thing. Uh, it's not that they are, um, that they're really scared, but he put it to where they've got to mark it. They have to mark a 214 down the fence to beat him for the finals. That 219 pushed him up there and she's going to be looking to do the same thing. In terms of her cow here having to push this cow just to, to get anything out of him though. Yeah. You know, he's not really giving her a lot here on the fence. She could be a little closer, but hey, that's a pretty turn. You got to give her some credit there. That was a little rough. Cal just didn't go running back down that fence like you want to. She really hasn't lost control, but it's taken away from the eye appeal. And now the, the cow's getting kind of slow, so it's hard to mark her up for a degree of difficulty. What she's going to try to do is have some nice circles, clean this run up, and get out of there. Well, a little bit of a rough switch right there. And then the cow goes over and gets on the fence. I hate it when that happens. You go over there and hang on that fence when you're trying to do your circles, and it just kind of slows the run down. Riding for the head, looking for the whistle. They're wanting her to get over there closer. There it is. You know, there's some good stuff, kind of mediocre. We're, we're going to have to put her, you know, around a 10, 12, right in there somewhere. Yeah, 210 is the score, so her two event total, 424. So for Brenda, she just uh, had a cow that was a little bit difficult to handle. You can see the 424. She's standing by with Jennifer. Brenda, reining is the thing you've done the most, so you're more comfortable with that, so you worry about the cow work, but it went pretty well for you. Yeah, I think it went okay, thank you. I boxed good, and my left turn was real good. Right cow ran hard, got circled decent, so hopefully it was okay. Did you have fun? Yes, I had a good time. It's just fun to be here. <laughs> Happy to finals. be in the finals, yeah. absolutely. Uh, my first time. And there's CD last, Chad Parkinson. They're getting set now. 215 was what they had in the rain work. We'll see if uh, Shad can improve on that a little bit. 433 is still the overall score to beat at the moment. Yeah, so Shad just has to be an 18 to tie it, which wouldn't, wouldn't make him be a winner. He's got to be a 19 because the high fence work will break a tie. So he's looking for at least a 19 so he can uh, push himself up there towards the top somewhere. This is a pretty good acting cow. He's, he's got a lot of move and he's not too unrespectful. He's able to hold him down here. He needs to go here pretty quick. So he's got enough air to make a run. When you're marking a 19, now he's pushing on him a little. He needs to get over there and get him stopped. He's just gonna go down the other fence and that is not a penalty at all. A little long in that turn, not too bad. There's some, there's quite a, quite a bit of speed there. So they're gonna give him a little um, leeway. He set up for another nice turn. Really good turn. That helped him out. Now he's got to go get circled. And he is circling tight. I love that kind of circle. Switch. And another nice circle. Kind so lays the horse on him. And yep, it's right there. Close, tight, in control. You hurt him a little bit for that first turn, but other than that, a nice run. 217 in the fence work, 215 in the rain work, so 432 for Shad Parkinson. Second place, one point behind Robert Chown. When we come back, two NRCHA Giants, Don Murphy and Ted Robinson, we'll be right back. Stephenville, Texas, the NRCHA World Finals Open Bridal Competition on Horse TV. Don Murphy on Sparking Train, 218 in the rain work. And you know Don Murphy loved that, just setting the table for what he can do here in the fence work. Yeah, that's right. He just needs to be a 215 and a half to take this lead. What he's wanting to be will be about a 218 or a 220 plus just to put all the pressure on them 220s. And he is having a tough cow. He handled it, so he is sitting in the plus box right now. This is something he could put together. Well, you know, he's thinking he'd love to mark 225, 226, put a really big number up there. And, you know, this is the kind of cow that could be kind of feast or famine. You could, you could do that or, or everything could go south on you, too. That is no doubt. I think he's got control of him here. He made that cow go back to the fence and stay on it. So Don's feeling pretty confident about, about having control over this cow. And now he's just got to, he probably wishing he'd move around a little bit. When they run that hard and then stand still, see, then you got to take a dead lay at him like this. Cow's pushing him off the fence. That's a pretty tough open field tackle. Uh, not really a plus situation. Cow's outrunning him. This is all just hard stuff. 
not any fun to be in that saddle right now. You want to get up there to the head. So, okay, now that they can start blessing him a little. He's getting this cow run down a little bit. He needs to get a right turn and then get circled. That's a cow with a lot there. of action, uh, pretty lively, and a uh, boy, just a kind of manual labor there for for Don Murphy. Oh, the, yeah, he's going to be out of air when he comes out of this ride. That's a lot of work. Oh, and then that cow's pushing on him, but he got him before the fence, saved himself, got the buzzer. You know, he's going to have a. This is going to be kind of an average score, not what he was wanting, but it should keep him in the race a little. That was a wrestling match, 214 and a half, 432 and a half. So he does move into second place by just a half a point, but that was a workout. That was a wrestling match there for Don Murphy. Don't you hate those? Not quite what he had hoped for. Well, he works his way out of the arena. Jay Holmes will come on in. Jay Holmes riding done it big, 211 and a half for them in the rain work. So they have some ground to make up. We'll see if he's drawn the right cow to do that. Well, you know this little horse can do it. This is such a good little horse. And Jay's a good little rider. Well, he's not really that little, but he's a good rider. <laughs> Come all the way from Florida, so you know he wants to win something, take it home. He's already won the Hackamore here once. It'd be fun to have that bridal championship, too. He's got a, he's got a pretty big hole to dig out of with the 211, so he's mostly trying to mark up. You see, he didn't waste any time down there. He's looking for the 220. Oh, and he was kind of set up to have a turn, but now he's gone past the center marker. That's going to be hard to mark high. Here's a big turn. If that had been on his first one, he'd be sitting in really good shape. Excellent circles. That's hard to pull off. Cow gets him on the fence a little bit, but everything keeps flowing so they won't hurt him bad. If he can get this kind of circling going on the other way, he's going to mark a decent score. There we go. Pretty. That first turn just killed him, though. That that point marker, they're just going to take away. He went for it all and just didn't work that time. But well, didn't waste any time on that run. 215 and a half is the score. 427 is the overall score for Jay Holmes and Dunnabig. Not going to win here in Stephenville. And there's Ted Robinson. Master Kawia is the horse. You know, Ted, 213 and a half in the rain work. And uh, this is really where he shines. He, he loves to, you know, he can hold a lead or he can come from behind and you expect big things from him once he nods and starts to box the cow. Especially on this horse, because this horse has so much power. Teddy knows he's behind. He knows he needs to be in the 20s. And uh, he's not gonna mess around on the end down here for two reasons, because he's behind and he has a horse to go catch a cow. The cow's not moving around much, but um, Teddy, he's going anyhow. Love to watch him ride when he's behind. He showed us this horse's burst of speed when he set up his stops in the rain work. Good turn. Pretty nice. Now he's running. He's got to get a good crush on this turn right here and he's going to mark. Very good. Teddy's going to go ahead and circle up because he's out in the middle. Look at the speed that horse has. He is, he's, I think there's a little piece of arena over by the judges he hasn't used yet. <laughs> There we go, get over there. That's the Energizer Bunny coming be from behind and they're gonna have to mark him. Boy, and they do too. 220 for Ted Robinson and Master Kawia. They go with that 213 and a half in the rain work, 433 and a half by a half point. Ted Robinson has moved to the lead. He's standing by with Jennifer. Now, when you get out there on this horse, you kind of know that you just had to just let him go? Yeah, kind of that's the way it is. Got to let him roll. It's in the finals, Jennifer. He just rolls a lot harder than I want him to. I think he loses a lot of stop when he gets to rolling that hard, you know, and uh, I don't know. He's done it off and on. He'll do it at home, you know. It's his, that's the type of horse he is, you know. If he's with you, you got him. Today, I think it was about 70-30, and I was a 30. On the rain work, he was middle of the pack, but look at that. Ted Robinson and Master Kawia jumped to the lead, 433 and a half. Robert Chown and Short Oak in second place by a half point. But still to come, Wade Rainey and Ken England, the two guys that dominated in the reigning, will be right back. Glad you're with us for Horse TV's coverage of the National Rain Cow Horse Association World Finals Open Bridal Competition. This competition broken down into two parts, the rain work and the fence work. Right now, Ted Robinson, our overall leader, but still to work, Wade Rainey and Ken England, the guys that set the pace in the rain work. And Wade Rainey on Lena's Gray, first to go. 
214, that's all he needs and he'll take the lead. Yeah, and the tough thing about a 214 is a 210, you can play it safe and mark a 210. A 214, you have to have some degree of difficulty and you have to get, you have to have something go right. So it puts you in, the, in that, that area where you can't just play it safe and Wade knows it and Wade knows there's a 220 right behind him. So he's got to go have a good score. You just got to let it all hang out for this run. There's no playing safe and Teddy put the pressure on him when he pushed him up to that 214. Excellent lead from the corner. The boxing was good. This is picture perfect run right here. Nice. Little bit, he wishes he could have went back down that fence and not had the circle, but this is still a very good run. Excellent. He's right on target here again. Another good turn. Little bit behind that cow. He knows he's a 220. He knows he's having a good run. He has got to get up there and get circled. Plenty of speed to plus up. Excellent. Get over there and get circled up. This is maybe the craziest guy in it. Oh, stand up there, Wade. Come on, come on. <laughs> that just adds to the drama. <laughs> That's why these guys' heart rate is up so high when it comes Spence work time. Thank you. He knows he went to the lead. Well, almost Wade went down, but he kept it together. Just for a scary moment right there. <laughs> Keeps riding, that's saying, hanging tough and staying in there, him and the horse. But Wade Rainey just wouldn't give up, hanging in there on Lena's Gray, a tip of the hat, and he just needed a 214 to take the lead, no problem, 219 for Wade Rainey, 439 is the total, he has the lead and just one guy remains, and that is Ken England, start me a tab, 219 and a half or bigger if he's going to get the win. Yep, that's right, so there's a... There's a little pressure on the newcomer, but hey, we saw him in the rain and it looked great. He handled it great. This is a great horse. There's, a, there's no better time than right. And now this cow's standing still. A guy just hates that. He's wanting that cow to move around a little bit and show him what he is. When they stand still, they don't use any air up and your horse does. Now he's getting him to push around a little. It's very eye appealing. From the judge's standpoint, the horse is all looking just how he should look. Looks pretty. Wish the cow would move a little bit. At least he's going to get a good start on him out of the corner. Here we go. And, and at this time, he still probably doesn't have a very good read on the cow, does he? No. It's, I hate it when they stand <laughs> there in the corner like that. Now it's just everybody leaves from the starting blocks at the same time. Pulls a good turn off. Excellent. One good thing about it, the cow is running hard. That's a, another great turn. If he gets circled up, we're, <laughs> we're gonna have some real contention for Wade Rainey. Switch. Tiny bit rough, but the speed is enough to help him carry through it. Comes all the good. way to this wall over here. Yeah. Well, we'll see what the judges do with that, but they're gonna have to do something. They got a decision to make. <laughs> And it didn't take him long. 225 for Ken England and start me a tab to go with that 220. 445 overall. They're the open bridal champions here in Stephenville, Texas. Lena's Gray and Wade Rainey in second place. Ted Robinson rallying in the fence work. He finished third. Our winner is standing by with Jennifer. So all you have to say at this point is start me a tab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's a good old pony. He is. I couldn't have done it without him, that's for sure. Is this amazing to you that you're here at the finals for your first time and then winning the trophy? Yes, ma'am. It sure is. It was a blast. When you were out there, let's talk about your reigning run first. At what point did you really feel hooked up like it was it was coming together, right? Uh, you know, for the dry work, I knew I had him before I walked in. Um, you know, he just felt great. He felt like he was going to be honest. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, he always does it. And when he... He's big when he's when he does it right. He's tough to beat. Congratulations to Ken England and Start Me a Tab, the Open Bridal Champion here at the NRCHA World Finals in Stephenville, Texas. For Jennifer Reynolds and Russell Dilday, I'm Jeff Metters. Thanks for watching. So long from Stephenville.